Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We got the 59 Dodge Coronet in here. We're gonna pretty much pick up right where we left off. I mean, we got some uh, some rust repair going on here in the drip rail, and check it out, man. We got some materials that came in the mail. Um, Randy from Auto Auction Rebuilds. If by some odd chance you guys don't know who that is, I know we've got a lot of new subs, and maybe some of you don't know who Auto Auction Rebuilds is, go check him out. There'll be a link in the description, and there'll probably be one of those little card thingies up at the top of the screen you could click on. We'll see if I can't figure that out. But anyway, he has ordered some materials from Eastwood. Now, since then, Eastwood has agreed to kick in and send some supplies free of charge. Much appreciated. It is on the way, and it should be here, like, any time now. But before we knew that, we, uh, we, we ordered some stuff of our own. So I'm kind of excited. We're going to open this up, see what we got here. All right, man, all kinds of stuff. Look at this. Heavy duty anti-rust. All right. All right, looks like we got several cans of that. Cool deal, cool deal. All right, so let's see what we're dealing with here. Durable coating protects internal surfaces from rust and corrosion. Ideal for rocker panels. All right, cool, because we're definitely working on some rockers also. Uh, ideal for rocker panels, frame rails, and tailgates. All right, average coverage, eight square feet. So that's more than enough to take care of a rocker panel. And whatever else we come across, especially since we've got like four cans of this stuff. All right, so this stuff right here, this takes care of existing rust. This will neutralize it. This will kill it. This will stop it dead in its tracks, keep it from progressing any, fur any further. And that's exactly what we need here. All they want you to do is just come through and just kind of get the light, scaly stuff off first. Anything loose needs to come off. And then, of course, clean it properly. It actually suggests a cleaner on here. If you wanted to buy the exact cleaner that they uh, recommend, it's all on the can. And uh, we can give you a number for that here in just a second as soon as I find it. But anyway, that's it's simple process and there'll be uh, links in the description for all this uh, rust proofing material stuff that we're using from Eastwood great products uh, I wanted to ask you guys that know this little piece here That goes on the drip rail should there be another piece that continues on the whole length of this drip rail or Is it supposed to be like that? Is, is it supposed to just stop right there because it seems like it should carry on but I don't know if you guys know, leave me a comment, man. Much appreciated. So let's get started. Let's see about getting this off here. You know, I've got my picks over here. Uh, you know, big ones, little ones, curved ones, whatever. Just anything that works. Flathead screwdrivers, trim tools, whatever you can get underneath there to pry on that without damaging it is all you need. So first thing I like to do, if you guys have been watching the videos, you know that we got to get in there and kind of get rid of some of this painter's caulk. I don't know what, I guess they were... I mean, they were trying their best to preserve this thing. I don't know if they had water leaking or if they were just trying to keep it from happening. Maybe the, maybe the guy that owned it knew what was going to happen, and he just tried to seal it up the best he could. I don't know. Uh, unfortunately, it became a water trap, so it kind of defeated the purpose over time. It's working it kind of a little at a time. I can see it. I mean, it's, look how loose it is now. Oh, yeah. See, there we go. All right, good deal. That's a little piece. We're going to have to keep track of that. But looky there. More crud. It's like every time you remove anything off of this, you just find more crud. So that's why we're doing this. We'll have to get that out of there. It's another piece of the old seam seal. Look at that. So, yeah, we got to get all that crap out of there. Can't paint over none of it. All right, so we are going to store this and try not to lose it. I'm going to stick it right stick it right there in some tape. Come back over it like that. There we go. I'm going to label it. Let's see, what do we call it? Drip rail. Drip rail. Driver side. All right, yeah, I may need you guys to remind me of this later when I'm looking for this piece. <laughs> Remember, it's in the ashtray. All right, so I found these screws here. That's easy enough, right? We'll get these out. They go all the way down, this trim molding, all the way through here. So we'll get all of those out. And I think, oh, we got another screw there. Nice rusty one, that'll be fun. Uh, hopefully there's nothing under there. We'll lift the hood and see. But if not, that should be the end of it. The rest of it should just kind of probably click down in that channel like the, like the rear glass did. Remember, it, it went down in the channel here. But we're about to find out. Let me get these screws out. 
Well, after close inspection, I got up in, inside of here with my light and there doesn't appear to be any screws through there. So, let's see if we can get this off of here now. I'm gonna be very, very careful. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to sit you guys down for a minute. While they work this, it's definitely gonna take both hands. I promise you that. Start kind of wiggling it loose in all the right places. Something I didn't even notice before, but this is this is actually two different pieces. Look, it separates right here. So maybe that'll help us out. Maybe another hidden screw under here. Who knows? Let's see. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that was it. it. Just like that, it just released. That's pretty cool. All right, so this part, you wanna be very, very careful wiggling it loose from this part here. See if I can get you guys closer. This here just slips over that, and kinda of goes in, in a little channel. You wanna be very careful when you're pulling that stuff apart because this literally slips inside of this. So that all needs to be right. If you bend it all up, you won't get it to slide together later and it turns into a pain in the ass. All right, now that piece is out of the way. Let's start with this piece. Well, again, two more pieces. Look, we have this piece here, which is apparently separate from this piece. And I guess that serves as a channel. I mean, think about it. The water runs down and that serves as a channel for the water to hit and run and go out that way instead of just running right down into this jam which would be a disaster right and you can see here all of the the weather stripping has failed it's all going to have to get replaced it's in terrible shape so if it wasn't for the little gutter here i guess that water would just flow right on through and that wouldn't be good so anyway let's see if we can't pry this loose just the same way we did the other side we're just going to go really slow and just kind of work at it patience is very very important when you're doing this part you can't you can't get frustrated. You can't be forceful. I mean, we're, we're literally talking this thing into coming apart right now. And that's all we want to do at first. Just kind of coerce it. See, see what I'm about to do here? Stupid. Stupid. Don't, don't do that. See, that's just me getting in a hurry, wanting to just start prying at it. And you got to fight that urge. So, it seems as though if we come up from the bottom here... We could kind of kind of twist that out of its little channel here. Let's try it. Kind of get up in. Maybe my little little screwdriver will help us out here. There we go. Look how easy that got in there. And that's what we want to do. Just kind of get in there. And I'm not getting crazy. I'm not getting crazy. I'm not just getting in there prying. You can clearly see we're not bending anything. We're just talking it into coming apart little by little. You guys know how these old girls are. You know how they are. You gotta be nice to them. You gotta be sweet. We'll just keep messing with it, just little by little. Now what, what we got going on here is that is down in, in a channel. This actually rolls over on top and goes down in a channel. So you're kind of gonna need to kind of lift it up out of its channel well that's hard to do because it, it folds over this area too so how do you get it to go up right without starting to bend things well that's the part where you got to just kind of talk it into it little by little see here i know if i keep pulling on that i'm gonna start bending this so i, I gotta stop can't you can't do that i could come in here like this with my trim tool this is how i got this piece to pop i just kind of got in there and just kind of worked that edge just a little by little all the way down and all of a sudden it just released and that's what we're looking for here. We'll kind of work that a little by little. Try to get it up over that lip without tearing anything up. We're not really worried about damaging paint because, I mean, this it's damaged already, you know? So we're not gonna hurt anything. Now I could get in, in here and kind of finish working that out a little bit, but again, we gotta be super careful because we don't wanna bend that lip. It's just about knowing when to quit is all. Just know you know where that line is drawn. You don't want to keep going until until you bend it. You know, you definitely don't want to be breaking a glass or making dents in the surrounding panels or any of that kind of stuff. So just take your time, man. Just 
I'm not running a race here. Now we look at that. We got it over the edge now. Now let's see if we can start getting it to come up off of there. Look at that, just like that. Just like that, it popped loose. And it was just a matter of getting it over that first edge. And of course, doing it without bending it. So, if I had to guess, this is just going to kind of slide out this way because it, it's sitting over the top of this other piece. And remember, they slide into a little channel like this one did, this one here, you know. So, we're going to have to kind of slide that back out. So, let's try it. Let's start wiggling around. You can already see it coming loose. Just keep wiggling it. Be careful, this stuff can touch you. Look at it. See it coming apart? Can you see it? Just like that. All right, so we got that piece out without tearing anything up. Good deal. Nothing's bent. It should go back in later. We'll get everything cleaned out so it'll kind of click in with ease, hopefully. All right, here's our little gutter. Just kind of sits in there. Look at, look at the dirt. You know what that does, that traps moisture, right? So good thing we're getting that out of there. All right, now we can do a little more inspecting now that we got all that tore apart. And here's our, our next little problem area. Check that out. See all that dirt and debris gets trapped in these. Look at that. That's pretty thick. That's pretty thick. So that's been holding, holding moisture for a long time. Look at that. Let's see what that is. This, is that metal? Is it? Yes, it is. It most certainly is metal. So, again, did we catch it in time? Or is it garbage? Let's find out. Get some more of this cleaned out of here. See what we're working with. Of course, more old seam seal. We'll have to We'll have to pick all that out of there. We'll get our screwdriver and our hammer and we'll just run down that channel just like we did up here and that'll make light work of that. We'll clean it all out with a wire brush on a wheel and get that all cleaned out. First, I'm gonna vacuum all that out. I recommend vacuuming over just blowing out with arrows. I don't wanna release all that in the air and be breathing it later. So let's just vacuum that up. We're going to continue on getting this piece off. This has no screws in it anywhere that I can see, so wish me luck. I mean, this this one, I don't know, man. Hopefully, it'll come off easy. I've got a ton of seam seal in here. I'm going to have to kind of break that loose. It comes out pretty easy. I mean, once you get your, your trim tool hooked in there, there's really nothing to it. I mean, look at that. I mean, it comes right out of there. So that's exactly what we want. If you don't get that broke loose, you'll never get the trim off because it's literally glued on here at this point. Run this all the way across to the other side. There we go. We should be broke free at this point. Now comes the fun part. Let's see if we can't pry it loose. All right, so it kind of, I mean, it feels loose. That's a good sign. Maybe that'll help us out. I mean, just wiggling it around with my hands, I could kind of feel it trying to loosen up. That's good. I'm expecting it to be kind of clicked into a channel. I mean, that's what we've been coming across so far. All right, this is this is gonna be challenging, but that's okay. The back one shield was the same way. Everything was easy until we got to the top, and then it was like, oh, this is kind of a pain. But we got through it, so I'm expecting that to happen on this one let's see because we really need this off of here you guys hopefully you guys can see this but i did notice that there is a clip underneath there holding this on so judging by the way that's clipped in there again this is the first time i've ever done this so i don't know man i'm learning you're we're all learning together here if you guys know you're probably yelling at the tv right now but sorry i just i don't know how this comes off i'm thinking the way that clip looks that this is going to kind of kind of roll off like this like i don't know so I'm going to keep messing with it and try it. I'm actually going to get underneath there and see if I can't kind of roll it loose that way and see if that gets us anywhere. So far, I can't get it to release from this clip. I don't know if it's because I'm not doing it right or if it's just because of rust 
or what, but to try to trying to do this and not tear it up is very, very difficult. But we are going to keep trying our best here. Yeah, see, I don't know if I'm doing that wrong or if it's just ru a rust issue. I can't tell yet. All right, so it seems as though there's a clip here that needs to slide off this edge. Let's see if we can get it to come off there. I think I got it. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Whew, that's sketchy. And yeah. And yes, it's the clip isn't wanting to come off because li this literally just slips right on here and it's just stuck that's all like i said before we're merely trying to talk this old girl into coming apart you gotta be very very careful because when you're prying on this stuff man out of nowhere it'll just kink but once you get one in started Just keep wiggling. <laughs> That's all I know to tell you. Just wiggle. Don't pry. Try not to pry. If you do pry, do very, very lightly here and there. But for the most part, just wiggle it. There we go. Look at that. Let me run over there to the other side. I think we're down to the last clip here. Be really careful out here on the end. All right, so good news. We did manage to get this whole piece off. We didn't break any of the clips. They're all still there. See them there and there, just three of them, I guess. Um, nothing's bent, nothing's dented. So we're good to go, man. Well, we know a little more about what we're dealing with, getting all that out of the way. And again, there was no way to paint this car without removing this stuff. Uh, it just looks like more of the same a lot of surface rust looks like we probably caught it just in time We'll be able to get in there with our Eastwood products and convert all of this just fine. It's all still good metal Nothing's eaten through so far. We haven't found any holes So that's some good news man for real because I was wondering about that Now this seems to be the most effective method of getting all this old seam sealer out of here I mean, It just pops right loose All right, so we got all the old seam sealer dug out of there. Now we're ready for the wire wheel. After that, we shouldn't have to do anything but just kind of feather it all back and then we could start adding in that rust proofing. But before we do that, if you guys remember when we popped that molding off the back, uh, it was loaded with mud. So I'm expecting that to happen again. Let's get in there and find out. Let's get these windshield wipers up out of it. Well, I guess they're not gonna stay. I'm gonna have to set you guys down for just a minute while I work through this. Very, very slowly. This piece, this piece um, is very thin, so you gotta be careful because you will bend it in a heartbeat. There we go, fine. Okay, so we managed to get it off without tearing it up, good news, but we screwed up. We went at this all wrong. And by we, I mean me. Look at this. This actually bolted in. In fact, let's look at this. See that stud? Uh, this one's missing the nut off the bottom of it. But apparently this, this is designed to bolt in from the bottom somehow. I guess we'd have to get up under the dash somewhere to actually get to these screws. But it's good to know. You know, we'll just take it, kind of bend these back out put them back on the trim and we're going to get up under the dash and figure out how to pull those off. So, all right, after getting everything vacuumed out, we can really get in there and inspect that 
channel and it looks great i mean there's no holes in it anywhere it's good solid steel it's just a little surface rust nothing but i think you guys are right i think we do need to pull the glass out of this thing i, I was trying not to i was trying to get away with it but uh, can you see can y'all see under there a little rusty and you know if it's rusty under here you know that that water went in under this you know rubber molding here so for now i want to move on with uh rust proofing these drip rails we could still get in there and rust proof all of this up here all around these edges get all of that straightened out taken care of so we're going to move on with that get that done and then we'll we'll tackle this as a whole separate project because that glass is going to be a bear to get out of there we got to see about sourcing this rubber molding i don't want to just go in and start cutting stuff out and then find out that uh, a molding is six months back order or something. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, really, in all honesty, you shouldn't cut this out until the new molding's here, until the new glass is here and everything. We've opened all of this up. We're going to go around. We're going to clean all of that up, get it ready. And then we're going to start rust proofing. This is a perfect indication of why the glass needs to come out. I mean, I could get up in here right next to this, this rubber seal and just start scraping. And just look at all the crud that comes out of there, you know. That stuff's tucked away up in behind there. There's no point in converting all this rust out here and then leaving rust inside of there behind that, that seal. I mean, there's just no point in it. It makes everything that we're doing a waste of time. So we've ground all this down with our 24 grit disc on our 3 inch grinder. Now what I want to do is I want to come in as per the directions on the Eastwood rust proofing materials. We want to come through and we want to 80 grit all of this back. We're going to feather it all back because we're going to be spraying that material on and we don't want that rough edge. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go the extra mile. I'm going to go ahead and just strip the whole roof and get it down because once we're done with the rust proofing, we're going to let that sit overnight and then we got to get right back out here and we're going to start priming and getting the roof ready for paint. So let's go ahead and get past this part. So basically this is what they're wanting you to do is come in and feather it all back but like i said we're going to strip the whole roof so we don't really have to worry about it too much we want to get as much of this old material off as possible okay so here's about one fourth of the roof done and this took about 46 minutes. So not too bad. You know, we'll do that three more times. We'll have the whole roof done. Uh, basically what I'm doing, this is the formula that I found that's working pretty good for me. Uh, I'm taking a piece of 40 grit on a block, spray water, you know, and just spraying it. Hit it with my crosshack pattern with my 40 grit, kind of work that down. And you can see, no time at all it already starts to break through that old paint and then I could come back with my 80 grit do the same thing smooth up those 40 grit scratches break it down even further and of course you want to do your crosshatch pattern as always I'm just kind of going over the whole roof like that you can see it breaks through it pretty pretty quickly and then I hit it with my DA 80 grit disc and it just it plows right through it no problem knocks it right down we are down past all that old bad paint we're down to the the red oxide primer a lot of you guys were asking me when i did the door what is that red there is that rust no that is called primer that's red oxide primer it's just a different color of primer that's all and that's apparently what they used on this car when they repainted it now you'll see a white spot here that's a dent i'm going to leave that there as a, just as an indicator that there's a dent there and I will come back and I'll address that later after the rest of the roof is done. You might see that there's a couple of them. There's one there and then there's a little one here. Some of these little tiny ones, those are just little dings, probably hail dents or something from back in the 70s. Who knows? But uh, those are so small, they'll probably prime in. If not, we'll just wipe them with our glaze and continue on. So anyway, uh, 45 times... Four, you know, what are, we, what are we looking at there? About three friggin' four hours of this crap. So yeah, we'll just keep plugging away. I think I'm gonna go ahead and pull this thing outside and use the water hose. This is getting a little bit messy.
sounding good, you guys. All right, so we're gonna switch over to using the water hose. See if we can't speed this up just a little bit. Again with my 40 grit. cool thing about wet sanding is I don't have to really worry about the dust so even though some of this the so dust isn't good to breathe that's for sure this will cut down on that a lot okay so we're switching tools we were sanding with this this is a palm sander this is more of a, a, a painter like a refinishing tool and the reason being is is it is it this pad kind of wobbles like this when you're sanding but it's a really fine wobble. I mean, it just barely, barely vibrates like this. Whereas this one here, it has a bigger wobble. I mean, it's it's more like this. It's going to chew the material down a little little faster. And since we broke it down with our, our wet sanding process we were doing a little bit ago, it should make light work of this. This should come right off really quick.
All right, we got her all worked down. Let's get her rinsed off. Got all that old white paint off of there. All that's left is just a little bit of this red oxide primer. I think it'll be fine. There ain't anything wrong with it. It's not peeling off or cracked up or any of that kind of stuff. So I think it'll be fine. Okay, so I've gone through, done a loose mask. I think this would be good enough. I just want to get in here and just spray inside these drip rails, and this will be good enough to catch some of that overspray. Uh, before we go on and do all of this area down in here, we will we will be pulling out the uh, glass, so that'll be for another time. But for now, let's get this treated. We'll have to let it sit overnight after we've sprayed it on, and then we'll come out in the morning, feather it all back, and then we could come in and put our primer over the whole roof, get it all primed in all one color, get it ready to block down. We got a couple little dings we got to fix while we're in the process and we'll get it ready for that new ivory white paint. I can't wait. Just kind of going through and cleaning up my surface. Got some uh, acetone on a rag and you can see I'm kind of just picking up some of the leftover dirt and rust that's in there. You know, I just want to make sure everything's nice and clean. See, it's kind of dirty in there. That ought to do it. Just wanna make sure it sticks really well. All right, so we got our Eastwood encapsulator mixed up in the gun. Uh, you, you can mix this, uh, you can thin it down like up to 20%, which is regular lacquer thinner, so that's exactly what I did. Just something to help it flow out of the gun a little bit better. We're gonna be using our five stage uh, turbine system from Eastwood as well. This is a great little gun. Man, I use it all the time, easy cleanup. All you do is just plug it in and go. So let's get started on it. We're going to start out with just one even coat and then we'll wait for a little bit for it to dry and we'll come back and put another coat on it after that. We want to make sure we get this down in this channel. We don't really care about getting it out here. Out here we'll spray our regular primer. We just want this to be down in that channel where all that rust was. Go across the front the same way. See, we're getting really good coverage. Now this is gonna to dry to a matte finish, so it won't stay as shiny as it's spraying out. It doesn't really matter because it's all gonna get painted over anyway. We'll do the same thing on this side. It's only been a few minutes and you can see it's already starting to turn to a matte finish. So it doesn't take long. It's probably about, I wanna say about 78 degrees out right now. So we're well within range to be doing this kind of work. I don't like doing any of this kind of stuff. Anything below 70 degrees makes me very nervous. I don't think chemicals act right. Anything under 70 degrees, the, the solvents can't escape. Things can't flash properly. I don't know, man, I just don't like it. 78 degrees, 80 degrees, I mean, this is perfect. All right, set it up with another coat and this ought to get it.
What do you guys think, man? You think it'll survive now? I think we uh, got enough of it hosed in there, that's for sure. It's all coated. I think it looks pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna let all that dry overnight and then we'll come out in the morning and we'll come back and we'll, we'll feather all of this out. And at that point, it'll be ready for our top coats. You know, we can go in there with our primers and everything like that. Got a couple of dents that need to be fixed, as I mentioned before, but they're, they're so small, it's, I mean, nothing to it. A little skim coat of glaze and that'll take care of that, no problem. Uh, this little spot over here is a little more, I mean, that's got some old body work in it. Good, there's no telling how old that is. But we'll skim over that. Uh, I'll probably grind all that out and start over, actually. But uh, still, it's not a bad dent. Very small. But we can't do anything with it till in the morning. So I am going in. It's getting kind of late. I will see you guys on the next video. Don't worry, we'll get it out real quick. We're not going to waste any time on this. I'm, I'm very anxious to get the roof done. I just want to see what it looks like all shiny and pretty again. And I'm, I can't wait to see that ivory white. I don't know exactly what they call it, but it does look like it looks exactly like ivory, like an ivory piano key or something. I love the way that looks. And that's what we're going to go back with on it. So anyway, stay tuned on the next video. This is as far as we could get on this. And that roof is huge, man. I think I'm going to have to charge by the acre on this one, man. I mean, good Lord, that thing is humongous. Took all day. Took all friggin' day long just to strip it down. I mean, that didn't even count the previous work we had into what, you know, getting the, the rear uh, trim off of the windshield and, uh, you know, digging all that seam seal out of this other side. So, I mean, we've easily got probably like five hours into this roof already. And we ain't even started priming yet. So, that's how these projects are, man. These cars are humongous. They got a lot of things that need to be addressed. They take time. So, anyway, we're getting through it. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, everybody. I really appreciate you watching, as always. Really freaking cool. Uh, this, this whole car deal, you guys have been very supportive of it. Awesome deal. Don't forget my Instagram. There'll be a link in the description. Check out my Facebook, uh, Weird Beard on Facebook. Friend request me. I'll answer it. I'll, I'll accept your friend request, I promise. But anyway, for now, I'm out of here, man. I'll see you guys later.